Jesse Bishop, and I lead another team in the same group, actually, uh, responsible for other parts of the Windows developer platform, including Project Reunion. Uh, and uh, we're going to spend about 15, 15 minutes today sharing a big picture of how we're evolving the Windows platform with Project Reunion and show some real world examples with some real code with WinUI 3, one of the libraries of Project Reunion, and some great work a partner Magix is doing with it. And then we're going to spend the second half of the time taking Q&A with you and getting your uh, questions about Project Reunion answered. Yeah, and we hope this talk is uh, useful to pretty much everyone who works on any Windows app or library, whether that's C++ or .NET for UWP or WPF or WinForms or even cross-platform frameworks like React Native. The reason we're unifying and evolving the platform is to help you make the most of the Windows 10 developer opportunity. There are over a billion devices now running Windows 10. These aren't just existing PCs updating, but it includes an increasingly diverse modern set of form factors. Hundreds of millions of devices now with touchscreens, always connected ARM devices, and more. And our telemetry shows us that people around the world are now using Windows more than ever before. Uh, Sacha touched on some of this in his keynote earlier. And uh, we think uh, all the people around the world using Windows and all the different ways they're using it uh, deserve apps that look, feel, and work great. And as software becomes an even more central part of all our lives, uh, people's expectations of that software and the software that you create uh, is transforming and changing. And that's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity for all of you who make apps and services on Windows uh, that people use. And so we want to help you make apps that you're proud of, help you make apps that your customers truly love to use and that work great for them. So what's changing about the world that people have to consider now in developing these apps and you have to consider? Well, one thing that's changing is hardware, of course. Uh, we have to support new hardware. Uh, there's obvious ways that's happening where the ways people interact with hardware is changing with not just mouse and keyboard, but touchpads that support gestures and touchscreens and pens and game controllers and making sure that you support, you know, working with apps in all these different ways. Um, there's kind of slightly under the cover ways hardware is evolving with new sensors, uh, you know, not just cameras and microphones, but gyroscopes and location. And people are starting to expect that apps, you know, are aware of their environment and how they function. And even things like GPUs are really changing the hardware landscape because they're not just being used for amazing 2D and 3D graphics, but to power artificial intelligence. And people are expecting more real-time artificial intelligence in their applications too. Uh, people's expectations are changing around user experiences. The UX patterns are evolving that people use to scroll and select things and uh, open context menus, and navigate around apps and toggle settings and chat and like you know things. And uh, people want UIs to be more personalized to them. There's people want things to work with light theme and dark theme. Uh, people have an expectation for richer and more immersive uh, experiences now than they did in the kind of static UIs of the past. Um, you know, app deployment and management. Uh, people want a hassle-free, trusted experience for installing and keeping up to date their apps. They don't want win rot. They don't want to worry about oh, is this app when it's updating messing with different registry settings and you know, putting other things, you know, at risk in my system. Um, you know, reliability, security, and privacy. Uh, no one wants to put a piece of tape over their, you know, camera and, uh, you know, worry that because they have to worry that some random process on their system is going to secretly snap photos of them or some app is going to crawl around their hard drive that they installed and, and take their files and send them who knows where. And system performance and battery life, you know, obviously. And to help you do all these things, we've been evolving the platform. We've plumbed new input types and sensors and things up and down the stack and, and created things like WinML to let you take advantage of GPUs for AI. We've created new controls and, and advanced the UX framework and a whole new composition engine that allows you to have those modern experiences uh, with the kind of performance and battery life and things people want. We've uh, brought you things like MSIX and the store to facilitate the kind of app deployment management people want. Uh, we've enhanced the notion, we've created the notion of app identity and contracts so that users can be in control of sensitive sensors and files on their system and when apps are accessing them. And we've added lifetime management services to the OS so that the contract between the, you know, the OS knows overall what the user is doing and the app knows what you're doing in the app specifically, and the OS can help manage that with lifetime services. And so you know, if you look at this, there's a long list, a tall order of things that you know you need to do to make a great app now and ways in which we've advanced the platform, especially through UWP to do that. But we know it's hard to kind of try and do that all at once.
Yeah, and we've really heard your feedback that building or rebuilding apps to take advantage of all those modern capabilities can be a pretty heavy investment. You know, there's a lot to take into account. For example, the fact that many companies and developers have a lot of existing assets and their existing desktop um, app code bases. So you want something that's very compatible with the desktop Win32 te technologies you're already using. And you also might want the benefits of that newer packaging and installer tech that Paul mentioned. But again, you're kind of starting with an existing set of technologies that you're using today. And you know, finally, your users may be spread across different versions of Windows, and they don't necessarily always have the latest updates. So we think what we really need here is a common platform and a less complicated way to design and, and update your apps for Windows that lets you take your existing uh, investments and more incrementally update them with modern capabilities that work for all your users. And that's where Project Reunion comes in. So Project Reunion isn't a new platform. It's really our long-term effort to unify access to the desktop and UWP platforms that apps are already using today, and then continue to incrementally evolve the Windows API going forward. So this is you know, really an expansion on our efforts over the last couple of years to break down the barriers between UWP and Win32 and add new capabilities to the platform to really make it easier for you to build a single Windows app that can reach all the Windows 10 versions and, and people, uh, devices that people use. And so as we looked at the best way to approach that, these are some principles that kind of rose to the top, which are all based on the feedback we've heard from developers. We need a platform and strategy that's compatible, agile, open, and modern. And so let's talk about each of these components of our strategy for the Windows platform, starting with compatibility. So when we talk about compatibility, we really have to start with where apps are today. And today, when you write apps or libraries for Windows, they call generally directly into the desktop APIs or UWP APIs, which are part of the OS itself. And over time, we've kind of brought more desktop APIs into UWP, for example, more file system APIs. And we've also enabled desktop apps to call some WinRT UWP APIs. But we think that we can really make this even simpler and more powerful. So in order to do that, with Project Reunion, we've started the process of taking the APIs you already use today across UWP and desktop apps, and we're decoupling them from the OS and making them available instead via package managers like NuGet, which is our package manager for all types of, of apps. And so we think this will allow you to mix and match from the APIs that work best for your app and adopt new capabilities on demand. And over time, our goal is that this will allow the distinction between apps that see themselves as writing to either the desktop APIs or to the UWP APIs to really fade away. We also think that shipping with this model also has some other benefits. Uh, yeah, getting to the kind of second benefit area we were talking about with agility, we really want to transform how you can work with Microsoft and how you can work with the Windows platform and really reduce the lag between when you need something or ask for something and when you can get it uh, and start to use it. And so, you know, you know, one of the ways we can do that is through backwards compatibility and lifting these APIs out as we're talking about. So new APIs and platform improvements can become instantly available without waiting for users or the OS updates to catch up. Let me give you an example of that. Suppose there's some new feature that you wanted, a new API or some other improvement, and you know, we added it to the operating system. Well, the 2004 version of Windows that just came out might have it, and that's great. But you'd have to wait until your customers were running that version of the OS to be able to use that API and use that platform improvement. With Project Reunion and this new way of shipping the APIs, uh, where they're going to work across the supported version of, of Windows, all of a sudden, your customers will be running any of those OSs, and you can instantly start taking advantage of that new API and that capability. And so we think this will cut radically down the time between you know, and this feeling of, oh, it's slow, I have to ask, I, get, I wait for something from Windows and I have to wait years before I can start to use it, and all of a sudden, you can instantly start to use it. Now, something people have liked about the way Windows APIs have been shipped in the past is the serviceability and the supportability of them. And we've thought about that too. And so project reunion packages can be backed by what we call signed framework packages to enable seamless support. And this is a technology we already use for a bunch of things, such as the C++ runtime already. Uh, and so what does that mean? So that means, Let's say you're a developer and you're writing against version one of the API, and you decide you want to move to version two of the API. You're in control of that. Because they're shipped out of band as these packages with side-by-side -side versioning, you can decide when you're ready to move to the new API, and, and you're in control of that. But let's say a bug was found in that uh, code somewhere, maybe a critical security bug that needed to get fixed. Uh, you don't have to 
recompile against a new version of the package and redeploy your app and go through all that because we'll be able to update the package under the covers for you and fix that issue and, and you can just move on. So this really strikes a great balance, we think, where you're in control of moving to the new versions of the APIs when there's API changes and new features you want to do, but for things like bug fixes that are critical and stuff, you can still rely on us to continue to support that. And so we think that gives you a really great agility with Project Reunion. Yeah, and as we work on all this, we're planning to do it in the open as well so that you can actually see as we go and give feedback and maybe even help out because across Microsoft and definitely in the dev platform team where Paul and I work, we've been moving more and more of our engineering to an open source model on GitHub. So our team also works on things like React Native and Windows Terminal and WSL and MSIX uh, and WinUI, one of our first project reunion components, which we'll talk about more in a sec. And we're going to keep using that open engineering model with the rest of Project Reunion. We'll be working incrementally and moving parts of the Windows platform to GitHub over time where it makes sense. And uh, this is really a big change for how we work on Windows. Um, and uh, you know, some of the places we've been using some of that open source stuff the most is in some of the you know modern APIs, and by that we mean kind of the latest and greatest APIs that, that we've been making available for you. And so I want to highlight how Project Reunion is going to do that and interop with those things. Uh, you know, one aspect is the Windows runtime projections themselves. And so that's going to allow you to use the latest standards compliant C++. That's what the C++ WinRT open source project lets you do. You know, .NET Standard 2, as you've been able to use with Windows runtime projections. And uh, earlier today, we made public the C Sharp WinRT project. And so that lets you use .NET 5, .NET Core, C Sharp 8, you know, all of those uh, with Windows runtime. Uh, APIs, and we also have a Rust WinRT, so that's a hot new language a lot of people are excited about, and you can use that as well. And so trying to keep abreast of the modern languages and API runtimes. Modern web platform is a critical thing a lot of people want access to, and so the WebView 2, uh, that's you know another project reunion component, based on the Microsoft Edge Chromium engine, so that's that same uh, modern web engine that the Edge browser is using that has the latest standard support and is very compatible with the real web. Um, supported for you consistently across Windows versions, working with Win32 and UWP apps, and giving you that ability to be always up to date, uh, as I was talking about before, but also with an option to uh, lock to a fixed version if you need that. And the modern uh, native UX platform as well. So WinUI 3 takes the Windows 10 UI platform and decouples it and makes it available via NuGet. So that gives you kind of modern seamless UIs with all the latest controls and capabilities that unmatch native performance. And what's cool is you can incrementally update your existing WPF and WinForms and C++ apps using that. You don't have to do everything in one fell swoop. And so those are just a few of the kind of, you know, technologies and things that, you know, we're bringing modern versions of to you with Project Reunion. And uh, I thought we'd drive into a little demo just to show that in practice. And so this is going to be, if some of you saw Kevin Gallo's uh, keynote presentation, this is that demo app. I'm just going to show you a few other aspects of it. Uh, and so what I've got here is, this is a, a standard Windows desktop app that um, uses, um, first I'm gonna show you just, it has some, you know, what you'll recognize quickly is very traditional Windows code in it. So here's some ATL com object. Anyone who's kind of familiar with Windows code, you see an H result here. This is, you know, classic Windows code, could have been written, you know, 15 or 20 years ago. Um, and the same exact uh, solution here, uh, we're also using modern WinUI 3 XAML. And so you'll see things like Visual State Manager being used, Navigation View, implicit animations. So a lot of the latest kind of capabilities and controls and things um, all together in a single app. And I'm going to switch to it and you'll see, you know, I've got a modern, uh, you know, great looking app here. It supports, you know, features like I can, you know, swipe on things and I can, uh, you know, use controls that have the latest kind of features and animations and so forth. Uh, so you can build a really nice, polished, great experience. Uh, but, you know, piece by piece, using existing code you have, using new new technologies kind of all together. Um, this, pack, this project also uses MSIX, another part of, uh, you know, technology we're bringing to, with, forward with Project Reunion. So, um, you know, that, that's pretty cool. It's a very quick kind of sneak peek of, you know, how some of this stuff comes together and what else you do. And, you know, to think about, oh, and the, one other thing I, was, I didn't show, but I'll mention is, actually, I'll just show real quick. If you see here these package references, uh, these are those things I was talking about. There's CSWinRT, there's WinUI, there's WebView2. And so these APIs are being referenced from these packages, not, you know, directly from the OS. 
because we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you uh, in CraneNet compatibility using polyfills where needed. So it's simple for you, just write against the APIs of the project reunion components like WinUI. And under the covers, in some cases, we're lifting things out of the OS entirely, like the composition engine. In other cases, there's things that are a little more pedal to the metal, like Win32K.sys you know, gets really into more hardware stuff. And so that just plums through, or in some cases, my polyfill is needed uh, to work across OS versions. So that's kind of the idea of it. And we're excited about what partners are starting to do, even with the previews already. Um, one I'd like to highlight is Magix. This is a company that makes user-friendly multimedia software. It's been doing it since 93. They have developers you know, around the world in, in Europe and US and China, and they make apps like Vegas Pro. And you know, their most successful apps are C++, Win32 apps that have low-level optimizations and a complete ecosystem of third-party APIs and libraries. And Project Reunion and, and WinUI 3 are letting them integrate modern Windows features into those Win32 apps. And so they can combine the power of the huge Win32 ecosystem with these modern APIs. And so here on the right, you see just a you know, prototype of what they're starting to do with the preview that we just put out today of, of WinUI 3, where they're making new color controls, for example, in their app that, that were great. And so we're excited to see kind of you know, what all, all you do with uh, Project Reunion and, and how we're advancing the platform. Yeah, and we really hope you can partner with us too and help shape the future of the platform as we continue to evolve it. And so you can actually do that by trying out the WinUI 3 and WebView 2 previews and some of the other things we showed and today and give us feedback. And you can also come talk to us and find out more on the Project Reunion GitHub. You can see there's a link here. We're opening this repo early in the process, so it's really still a work in progress, but we're hoping you can join us on the journey, really, as we continue to post design docs and get your feedback. We've already started opening issues for some of the next major components of Project Reunion that we want to work on, and we've actually already had some folks uh, there giving us feedback and, and ideas, and we are definitely interested in hearing more about what's useful to you. Uh, and there's a bunch of other sessions today. I hope you'll stick around after our Q&A session. Uh, there's the WinUI talk that'll go into a lot more depth about you know, what I spent 30 seconds on, uh, which is one of the big components of, of Project Reunion uh, getting started, and a lot of other great sessions. So um, with that said, why don't we uh, go to Q&A, huh? OK. Well, I'm Steve Wright, a PM with Microsoft. who work with these guys on, on Reunion and other things. And uh, we do have some interesting questions coming up. Maybe it's just because of the uh, the example with the the emphasis on UI, but one person is asking, is this only apply to UI elements or does Reunion also apply to other APIs in Win32 and WinRT? Yeah, so we see Project Reunion as really a more holistic look at the whole platform. So it's definitely not just UI. And in fact, you don't even have to use WinUI. WinUI is just sort of our modern best UI platform. And so it's really what we advocate for apps to use uh, where possible when they're starting to, to modernize their UI. But um, no, we're definitely looking at the full platform. And if you go check out the GitHub repo, you'll be able to see some of the other areas we're looking at. And even some of those other things we, we talked about today, like the language projections are definitely not just for UI, they're for really your whole app. Great. So an another question following up on that. Um, Someone is asking, what is the difference between what needs to be done in the OS as opposed to what can be done in, inside the, uh, the wrapper of Project Reunion itself? Or to put it another way, how far can Project Reunion go? Yeah, so I don't think Project Reunion as a wrapper is necessarily even the right way to think about it. We're really trying to take the actual developer platform of Windows and really just deliver it in a newer, better way. And so it's it's not just wrappers. These are actually you know, the platform. And that doesn't mean that we're necessarily taking the full like, you know, kernel of Windows and lifting it out or anything like that. So there's some set of core functionality which really already kind of works everywhere. So we don't necessarily have to do any different engineering or delivery for that. But what we're trying to do is provide a, a unified common way to actually call APIs and build an app with a common platform. And so it'll be a little bit of a mix. And again, these are the kind of details that if you go to GitHub, you'll really be able to kind of get a, a better idea of how this will work in practice. And you can also see we have those separate packages for things like WebView versus WinUI today, where we've started to kind of componentize these optional pieces in, in ways that we think make sense for apps. And just two things I'll add on top of what Jesse just said, you know, just for WinUI alone, it's literally, you know, thousands of APIs we've called through to tease apart the right way to factor things with dependencies and so forth between the OS and what we lift out. But because we're lifting, not layering, what that means is you're not going to have the kind of impedance mismatch using project reunion libraries that you might sometimes when someone just kind of plops 
another library over the OS. It really is the OS itself, uh, libraries and technologies kind of being carefully factored and, and teased apart to kind of give you this agility. Yeah, and like Paul was saying, we still get the, uh, some of the same support benefits and things like that through the use of things like the signed framework packages. So we can still make the same strong guarantees about, you know, these are signed official binaries that we support and can service as needed, for example. So a couple questions around down level support. Um, one person is asking uh, for more details on how we would be supporting new features in down level versions of Windows. And uh, there are questions about how far back the support would go. Yeah, Paul, did you want to talk about how WinUI is already doing this today? Yeah, uh, so in general, as we lift stuff out, it turns out you know you can kind of categorize or think about features. Sometimes a feature we've added to the platform doesn't really need anything new fundamentally, like at a hardware or like kernel or driver level. You know, a UI control is a simple example of that. If typically you can add a new UI control and it's pretty straightforward to just have that kind of work across different versions. Sometimes there's some capabilities that do need some things that, you know, there's a new graphics driver capability or something that's gotten created. And so in some of those cases, what we'll do is polyfill things. And so maybe um, some, you know, animation or some capability isn't quite as, you know, rich down level. And so maybe we'll just like gracefully, you know, be a simpler animation that'll run or something like that. Um, but in general, you can still have a consistent API surface that developers, you know, can target in doing that and uh, being thoughtful about how you polyfill things were needed and otherwise actually just bring the capability itself down when that's when that's feasible. I will say we want also are trying to be very realistic about what we can and can't do. And like there's things that just won't work on some hardware, for example, because you know, they just don't have the hardware support for it. And so there are some cases where you might have to still do a check to say, hey, is this hardware you're looking for present if you're doing something that's specific to that? So we'll also have a model for that. But like Paul's saying, as much as possible, we're trying to really take away the pain of having to do a bunch of version checks and things like that. You can really just write your app against one common API and then we'll do kind of the, the polyfills and fallbacks as needed for you as much as possible. Okay. Uh, we had some questions about store apps, and in particular, um, any issues with regard to like distributing a WinUI 3 or WebView 2 app through the Windows Store? Uh, no, that should that sh we should that should be allowed. I don't yeah, think so the store is just another you know way you can distribute yeah. your app. We think it's a good one, but it's not the only one you have to use necessarily. And that's a uh, kind of an interesting question. Uh, if Reunion becomes a new interface to the OS or a new way of building applications on top of the OS, do we need to worry about the the, the existing OS interfaces becoming obsolete at some point? Um, well, I think what you'll find is that you'll tend to prefer to write to the lifted version of the API because then that'll work across OS versions for you. And so, it's not, you know, a different API. It's just kind of that same API lifted out, and um, so we suspect over time people will just prefer to write to that API and not write to the underlying OS one, you know. But once an OS is shipped, we never can change that. You know, I'm saying like if someone has Windows 10 version 2004, whatever APIs are on that OS that shipped are on that OS. They can't change. They can't go away. They can't improve. They can't, you know, they are what they are, and so. Um, they're not going to go away. They're just going to be there. But we think you're, most people want to transition to writing to the reunion layer because uh, then they get that better compatibility and agility. Right. Once sense. you once you've had packages with different versions, you can actually target and keep using a specific version of, a, say, a project reunion library. So you know that that library will just be there for forever, essentially, or you know within reason. <laughs> and so you can actually have you know different apps targeting different versions of the library, even if needed. And that's part of the the benefit of this model for apps as well. So um, and I, I just want to reiterate that we're definitely not changing the sort of long-standing support that Windows traditionally has. You know, apps work on Windows for a long time. That's one of the strengths of the platform, and we don't plan to, to change that. So here's a pair of questions that make a really interesting couple. One is, on, on the one hand, um, would Project Reunion apps uh, run in a container? Like, um, and then at the other extreme, would we still be able to bypass Reunion libraries and call kernel functions directly? Now, those may be a little super technical, but 
<laughs> yeah, we, we can we can actually talk about both of those a little bit. So uh, we think that having apps be in a container and start to get some of those privacy and security benefits that Paul was talking about is actually really important. And that's sort of a trend we're seeing across the industry for, for a number of reasons. And um, so we think actually they're a good thing, but they're not going to be required. We think that it's important that you be able to start with how you build apps today if you're not packaging them in that way. And over time, be able to apply, you know, packaging to your app and, and make sure you get the benefits of that. So it's definitely something that we advocate for and we think has real benefits to apps over time, but we're not going to force apps to be in, in an app container, certainly, um, if that helps. And kind of a similar question around um, deployment. Um, will, will Reunion work with software that uses its own update mechanisms and, and not have to use the Windows Store and MSIX? Yeah, I think this is a little bit tied actually to the previous one, which which I didn't necessarily totally cover, which was uh, it's not going to be reunion or nothing. We don't see it. This is like a different platform or a replacement. You can continue to call OS APIs uh, in for the most part. In, in addition to reunion APIs, you just won't necessarily have the same guarantees about portability and and down level support and polyfills that you get if you're targeting only reunion libraries. So we're not preventing you from from calling the OS, but we hope over time that you know Project Reunion will grow in scope enough that most apps won't have to, and, and that way you get the, the benefits of Project Reunion really once you're using it more fully. Um, so yeah, you, you definitely won't have to. OK. And somebody's interested in learning more about Rust and is also asking about other languages like Go. This would be for WinUI 3 and, and I think Reunion as well. Uh, you know, uh, so there's WinRT projection projects. You know, I know for, um, you know, Go, I mean, for uh, Rust, as we talked about, and there's a C Sharp and C++. I, I don't know if there's one for Go in the works by anybody or if the community has created one, but I think that's certainly something people will be open to. And there's an Ask the Experts panel uh, on this topic that I included on that slide earlier where some of the people behind the WinRT projection technologies are there. And so that'd be a great place to ask more about that too, or on our GitHub. Okay, scanning around here. Uh, interesting question around um, uh, the version support. I guess we've, we've said we're going back to version 1709. Um, and some users would like to see it going back to 1703. Is this a, um, a short-term limitation, long-term? Do we have any way of forecasting where things would go in the future? The, the general model is that you know we want to support all the supported versions of Windows uh, out there. I think some technologies might be a little further along than others at you know achieving that all. Um, and um, you know I think the the dates you're referencing are about WinUI three specifically maybe. And so I think the WinUI talk is going to talk about their roadmap for covering the different versions of the OS. Um, yeah, and we don't necessarily see this as totally set in stone. So we definitely want to listen to your feedback. And as we do our engineering and planning on GitHub, you'll be able to see and, and give us feedback on what makes sense. And so, uh, yeah, we the really the goal of Project Reunion is that you can build that one app that gets you to all of the billion plus, you know, active Windows devices and all those users. And so we want to make sure that you can actually do that. And so the version story is, is kind of one major part of that. So whatever we have to do to to help you do that is is what we'll do. That's that's our goal, really. Yeah, and I think the overall cultural thing, I hope you take away that we're really trying to do with Project Reunion is really about those principles about making all of our technologies just more compatible for you and more open and more agile uh, so that you can kind of interrupt and, and work better. And so we hope by being open from the very beginning of the kind of this project, uh, we can have that communication channel with all of you to to make it you know, work well for you. Well, there's still a lot of great questions coming in, but we're just about out of time. And I don't think we've got enough time to go into another one of these. So I'm, I'm going to call it a day for this session. Um, but for all those people who still had questions, please visit us on, on our GitHub repo and, uh, and pose these things as issues so we can keep working on them uh, for ourselves and with you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care. Talk to you.